Right now, all eyes are on Dorian's path as we expect the storm to make a turn late today, early tomorrow morning. The Category 2 hurricane is also gaining strength. In fact, it's on the verge of becoming a major Category 3 storm. Covering Dorian from all angles, meteorologist Rebecca Barry standing by with a timeline for the storm. Ashley Harding, got to talk to customers at the Ace Hardware in Neptune Beach where they've got all the supplies you need, especially with flooding being a concern here. But we start with Melanie, who's live with Mayor Lenny Curry at the Duval County Emergency Operations Center. Mel. Hey, good morning, Bruce and Jen. So we do have an opportunity now to have a one on one with Mayor Curry. You know, he just was briefed in the Emergency Operations Center from the Weather Service meteorologist talking with police and fire just to make sure that we are ready for this storm. So this is a great opportunity. We have asked our viewers to post some questions, so we will ask those as well. So if you do have some things that you want to know, get them in and we'll try to get those answered to you. So I want to bring in Mayor Curry now. Uh, Mayor, you just had the meeting and we know as we've been reporting all morning, the storm has slowed down. What were some of the things that you learned today to help in your decision making? Well, that it has slowed down. Uh, looks like landfall is likely on Tuesday. Uh, and then the question is, based on certain models, will it turn and crawl? It looks like it's crawling now uh, with real wind speed up towards Jacksonville. We don't know the answer to that. But what we're seeing right now is what we what we saw in previous storms over the last four years. We had Irma. We had Matthew before that. And you recall, I believe it was Matthew that while we didn't have a direct hit, at one point we expected it. it, it went off the edge and still caused significant damage and, and you know issues that we had to deal with. So I want people to stay engaged. Be, just because this thing has slowed down, I would ask people not to tune out their local news. Uh, they need to know if this is going to have an impact. We could still be f facing possible evacuations the middle of next week, depending on wind speed and depending on uh, the impacts. And I asked you, you know, now that it's slowed down, does this give you a little more time to prepare? And you looked at me and you said, you know, we are already ready. And to your point, you just don't want people to tune out, and the city certainly isn't. That's right. We're ready. We plan for this. You know, we, we prepare for a, a crisis, any given crisis in the emergency operations center year round. Uh, and then when we ramp up and activate the, the, the center, there's people here full time, 24 seven, and will remain that way as long as we are under threat of this storm. I still want people to know their evacuation zones. Do not want to find yourself in a situation where if we have to evacuate, you're scrambling to figure out your zone. And that is one of the major questions that we're getting. One of our Facebook viewers wrote, you know, our community is concerned. So the number one question we got really was about the timeline that they'll get if we do have to evacuate. How much time will they have to prepare? Well, you'd like to have uh, two days, about 48 hours uh, to get people out of uh, the space. If we were to do the first two zones, that's about 250,000 people. Premature whether to say whether or not that's even going to happen, but know your zone. Go to jacksready.com. It's really easy. If you download the Jacks Ready app, you put your address in and your zone comes up. I know one thing that we had talked about is clearing out storm drains. You know, we can do that personally in our home, but the city also has been going out and looking at areas that are problem areas, about 90 flood zones. And we have one man in Hyde Grove who said he's made some calls and he's been asking to get his area cleared since the last couple storms and that hasn't happened. What's still to come as far as, you know, those neighborhoods that are impacted? Well, Public Works is out, is out making this clearance. I would ask your, your viewer to call 630 City. Uh, I would also say now that I've heard it personally, when we go off camera, if you get me that person's contact info, we'll have a crew out there getting the work done. All right. Well, you hear that. So that, that's <laughs> great. I mean, that's a great response there. So we'll make sure that we do that. Um, another question, you know, that thousands of parents have are about school closures. It's a holiday weekend. We don't have school on Monday. So when will they learn what's to come for next week so that they can make plans? So the, the folks that meet when we do the briefings in this building are uh, the superintendent, members of the superintendent's team, all the independent agencies, all, the entire city collaborates here. So as storm information and impacts develop, we share that with the superintendent. Uh, she'll talk with her team and with us and then determine whether or not schools need to be closed. Uh, at this point, I think it's premature, uh, not speaking for the superintendent, but I think it's premature to assume that schools will be closed on any day. We have to wait and see the speed of this storm. I mean, we could wake up tomorrow and this, un unfortunately, this thing could speed up. Mm -hmm. Let's hope it doesn't. And, you know, one thing that I, the superintendent did point out is that we have so many shelters that are schools. So all but two of the shelters in town are schools. So even so that impacts whether or not schools. It, it may be that you can get to certain schools, but those shelters being open affect the district. Yeah, that also if we do evacuations, we need shelters and schools. The same schools are there. But at the same time, even if we're only evacuating one zone, uh, you don't want you've got to basically you've got to close schools at that point in time because you don't want some kids going to school, some kids not. 
families determine who's evacuating, who's not. You want everybody to be on the same page and move in the same direction for safety. And that kind of goes back to your point of the illusion that it, we're safe and the illusion that things are back to normal. you got to stay plugged in so you know. Please, please pay attention this weekend. There is a major storm that's headed to the state of Florida that still has models that say once it hits, it could turn north and come towards us with a major rain event and possibly tropical storm and hurricane winds. Look, I, I understand people are probably, it, it's, it's tiring. You're watching this. You're preparing. It's stressful. You've gotten your supplies. And now where's the event? I get it. I understand. We're making the best decisions we can with the information and models that we have in front of us. So I ask people to just stay tuned, pay attention, because this is about keeping your family safe, even though it's stressful and tiring. And one thing I, I know that you'll have to get further information on, but there's a DCF Facebook page, and some people are asking about their check, their disability checks, their food stamps. Will they be allowed to access that money early in case of an emergency? That's a state decision, but what, what I'll do is uh, when we conclude this interview, I'll make sure my team checks in with the state and we'll get you an answer on that so you can report it back. And another thing, you know, there were some people that said, hey, you know, we canceled the game for tomorrow. They felt like maybe it was a little premature. Um, what do you think about that decision? Would you make a different decision knowing what you know now? I'd make the same decision because here's why. What we were looking, the decision had to be made yesterday. In talking with the universities, we would not have been able to move the game to Tallahassee if we had waited until today. Based on where that storm was tracking yesterday morning, the speed and all the expectations, it looked like we were going to be doing evacuations either Saturday or Sunday. There's no scenario where it would be wise for me to ask people to evacuate while people are visiting our city and there's a football game being played or the next morning while visitors are waking up in hotel rooms would have been so with the information I had I'd make the exact same decision got to make these calls early and just a personal question I mean you and your family how do you all get ready because for you this is 24 7 yeah, so Molly was telling me this morning some of the stuff she was going to be doing around the house. Uh, she's got a lot, you know, preparing, moving patio furniture around and making sure everything's locked down. And I said, gosh, I wish I could help you. She says, no, you have you have priorities that you have to deal with. So we just work together as a team. You know, my kids now are 14, 12, and 10. They've been through. This is this will be their third in four years. So, uh, like, my youngest, Bridget, was asking this morning, Dad, what's going on with the hurricane? Uh, so just like any other family, we're just tuned in and hoping for the best, praying for the best. And grateful our city's on it our fire department our sheriff's department our public works department all the people that do the hard work every day are ready and as far as updates for us and our viewers how often should we expect those at this point we want to begin to start pacing this with the pace of the storm uh, so we don't wear people out so i think what to expect is when there's another major development we'll do more briefings uh, you know a couple of days ago when it looked imminent like it was going to happen re regular briefings uh, we'll resume those at the appropriate time Mayor Curry, thank you so thank much you. for your time. Yeah, Appreciate you. it. I know so you got a, a busy day ahead and days to come. Yes. So thank you. Thanks. All right. So there you go. We are going to get those questions posed to Mayor Curry, the couple that he wasn't able to answer, and especially for the man who wrote out about his neighborhood there in the Bakersfield High Grove area. So keep those questions coming because we will have these opportunities to talk with our officials, and we want to make sure that we get that information directly to you. Back to you in the studio.